so we are going to discuss today the concept of a programming language so you know the programming languages are basically computer languages the way you give an instruction to a computer to perform a set of activities so what kind of activities do you expect a computer to perform can you set um, some examples to to perform tasks like calculation uh, and calculation right so to calculate you can use a programming language or if you wish to get some work done like to find out the vowels in a name from a name that also can be done with the help of a computer computer also can uh, do analysis of a big set of data meaning very of very easily meaning of analysis, meaning of analysis is uh, to find some answers of some some questions like suppose if somebody asks you what is the total of a few numbers hmm. so you are basically analyzing those numbers what you are doing is addition or if you are interested to know that you are um, interested to know to find the average of some numbers so what you are doing you are adding all the numbers and dividing by the number of such quantities so you are getting an average so these are called analysis so computer can do all those things another thing is if you ask a computer to do you have to ask the computer in a way the computer understands like writing in the binary code computer can understand a binary code computer can understand the binary code but you are not able to write a binary code because because it's very hard for us not only very and hard for you it is a very long zeros and ones you have to write and that is not the easy way to do That, that is time consuming. Hmm. So what you have to do is you have to write in a language which and is understandable by you and by a computer. And then there should be a way to make the computer understand to perform for it to to perform the work. So suppose we write uh, suppose we type in computer that my name is Neil. So computer will. converted into the binary form the computer will convert it to the binary form and next time if you understand. ask what is my name computer should be able to tell you your name is made so this understanding it happens if it comes by the binary code or by english form if it comes by binary numbers you will not be able to understand so it comes in english as an output so your language of entering the information or input to the computer is something which is similar to the english language but there is something which happens inside the computer which makes the computer to understand in its own way and then the computer has to make you understand the output so computer translates the whole thing to the way which you will understand the user will understand okay now just keep on listening without further interruption the basic concept of any programming language then i will go to the specific programming language which we are going to discuss today see what happens you have already mentioned the, a few terms like high level language low level language etc so to understand in a simpler way or the to the to make a person understand who is learning this concept for the first time it is like this if you are uh, wishing to get some work done by a computer you have to give an instruction in a way which is very easy for you to understand and these instructions will come in multiple statements each statement is called a line so it is a multiple instruction as for example if your instruction is to add 10 numbers then what will you do your first statement could be uh, something which will tell that i am going to enter some numbers then this next line could be the numbers themselves then the next step could be you are adding all these numbers number 1 plus number 2 plus number 3 up to number 10 then your next step could be dividing that all this sum of these 10 numbers by 10 okay then your instruction could be you tell me what is the answer so all these things you are writing in a way which 
is something similar to the English language. But after having it written, when it is computer's turn to understand in its own way, and remember, computer understands only in binary form, that is zero or one. Whole whatever sentences you have written in the language of programming, we call them the lines of the program. Okay, so this set of instructions is called a program, computer program. Computer program is basically a set of instructions given to a computer. So it has multiple lines or sentences. We don't use the term sentences, we call them lines. So these lines are converted to a form which computer understands so that they are in the binary form zeros and ones and this language the way computer understands the way computer thinks is called the machine language machine language is the language which the machine the way the machine thinks the way you think is in english the way the machine thinks is zero and zeros and ones so there should be a conversion between these two a high level language and the machine language so what is a high level language it is a language which is similar to english the way you write that is called a high level language okay why is it high level language how to remember which is high level language and what is low level or machine language high level language means the human beings are considered to be superior to, to computers because human beings can imagine human beings can create human beings can run make computers human beings are guiding the computers to write to uh, make some activity to do some activities right perform some activities so human beings are higher higher beings superior higher language is english english or any language which the human being understands it is not english as a language is a high level language high level language is the language which the higher beings which is human, right? human beings can understand okay so you can remember it in this way or h for human h for high level language so human beings understand the way the high level languages are written l for uh, in, 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 it's called machine language or lower level people call machine language is the more appropriate term to use rather than the low level language and uh, it is the machine or computer which understands or thinks in that way so there should be a method of translating from this between these two so there are two ways these things are done so one way to do this thing is suppose let us um, assume that you have written a language you have written a computer programming in a language which has 10 lines mm -hmm. okay so each and every line has to be understood by the computer right so there is a way in which the each and every line of your programming language of your program is interpreted interpreted means computer makes sense out of it computer tries to understand find the meaning of what you have written that is called interpretation so each and every sentence is interpreted by the computer so you are entering you have entered the whole uh, set of sentences or lines when it is computer's turn to understand or interpret in its way it does line by line okay so that has got some some advantage which you will learn what is the advantage of doing in this way so you might think is there any other way to do is there any other way for the computer to learn other ways computer will not do the interpretation of one line after the other what it would do it will see the entire thing as a whole okay it will understand the whole thing as a whole suppose you have written 10 lines the computer would try to understand the whole thing not line by line the whole thing after it understands at once, at once, at once okay at once at one go in at one go okay so that what is it is basically doing it is compiling the entire information so Com compilation this english term you know right compilation compilation means you are gathering many things together and making compilation. a whole sense out of it so that is the compilation process 
so computer can work in either of these two ways yeah. either it can interpret line by line and this uh, software which does this job is called an interpreter on the other hand the other way of making sense of the high level language is to wait for the entire set of lines that is the entire program and understand. to understand the whole thing one completely go. when one go that compiler that is you are compiling the thing it is a compiler that is also software yes, which is faster and better uh, that is a that is a good question but it, i think it, compiler because because interpreter can uh, um, will converted line by line you get, you get, don't lie down and study you sit straight when you studying you sit straight ha <laughs> compiler compiler converts the whole uh, the whole uh, 10 sentences but interpreter will convert only one sentence and one sentence so one by one so compiler has got many advantages compiler is fast compiler but is fast but uh, interpreter has got some other advantages like line by line if it can check whether your sentence is correct correct right. correct, correct or not correct incorrect what about uh, okay there there is there is another uh, difference which i will tell you okay now before doing that uh, can this light be switched on the other light so that you get some clarity pause the video pause the video no no you do it whatever okay. that's better so is this concept clear the concept of a programming language to i'm summarizing whatever i have told you up to this what i told you was you if you want to get some calculations done not necessarily every time you have to do calculations you can do some other kind of work also suppose complex not only calculations but suppose it can do analysis of text you know in english language there are vowels and consonants so if your name is megtirtha if i ask the computer what are the vowels used in the megtirtha so computer will use its algorithm to find out What's okay so i will tell you what is an algorithm okay What's the algorithm that, that that i will tell you so we are using a new term called algorithm <coughs> so i am going to explain what is meant by an algorithm i am coming to that So in this particular example, what will happen? M is a consonant, E is a vowel, G is a consonant, H is a consonant. Like this, what are the consonants and what are the vowels? If a computer is supposed to separate the vowels and consonants, it can it can do that. But for that, you have to write the programming sentences or the programming lines in the appropriate way. How this is written? It is a separate lesson. We will not uh, consider this today in today's lesson. So I was using a term algorithm. Algorithm means basically in a simpler way to explain to you, uh, an algorithm is a combination of different logical steps to perform a task. As for example, take the typical example of algebra. No, not algebra. You take very simple example of average. Average. Mm -hmm. Averaging. Number one first. Average. So. What do you want to uh, do in averaging? First of all, you are you are given some numbers. So the algorithm could be first you have to count how many numbers are given. Yeah. Suppose in the class there are fifty students, and you are averaging the mathematics marks of the students scored in the final exam. So for fifty students there will be fifty numbers. So the first step will be how many numbers are there? The answer is fifty. Second thing is. what are the numbers scored by the students the first student scored say 80 out of 100 second student scored 90 out of 100 third student scored 85 out of 100 like this so the step will be you have to add all these numbers then the next step will be this addition or summation has to be divided by the number of such students yes. so you're dividing it by 50 yes. you are getting the answer so these steps are all logical steps or mathematical steps okay so there is a difference between logical and mathematical okay although i am using this term in a similar way um they are having some differences okay which we will say all that i wanted to tell is it it could, it could be logical steps it could be mathematical steps whatever they should be as uh, 
systematic way of solving a problem from the beginning until you get the answer then the whole thing is called an algorithm okay so in programming language which is intended to do some analysis basically you are writing an algorithm to fit to the computer and the computer is supposed to convert it to the machine language averaging you are feeding those numbers from your input device your input device is your keyboard entering then computer cpu the central processing unit has got the program which can make sense of the high level language yes. this program programming program could be either interpreted or compiler depending on the programming language which you are using like you are asking or writing the question a computer and the computer will answer it yes and the software which is residing into the cpu is it could be either compiler based Compiler. or interpreter based and whatever is the software the computer does the thing the execution of the algorithm so we call execution of the algorithm so you are learning a new term here called execution execution means to run a program run a program means it doesn't have anything to do with running running a program means to make a program to execute its different steps and come to the answer to perform its different steps and come to the final answer this is meant by running a program or executing a program and then you get the answer so this is the whole thing now here there is a basic concept which i need to explain to you the basic concept is like this suppose you have written a program in any language any programming language as before coming to the programming language do you know uh, names of some programming languages no no you know at least one you tell me i don't know any you don't know any okay there is a programming language called uh, gw basic word word is not a programming language word is an application for you to writing typing something programming language no have you not heard of qbasic now you are learning so qbasic is a programming language gw basic is a programming language c is a programming language c++, c++ is also another programming language fortran java, is java, java. java is also another programming language so, so you know already this now names fortran is another language pascal is another language okay nowadays people are learning languages like python okay. python okay so these are all different programming What languages these this is also another programming language so why there are so many programming languages right. one programming language would have been enough yeah. but what happens when people understand the need of different features different capabilities based on the needs what kind of what kind of python do python also can do all these basic things plus it has got some other thing but our discussion today is not specifically on python all that i want to tell you is that there are different programming languages you see one programming language high level programming language would have been enough is enough yes but there are so many because there are different kinds of features of programming languages i will give you one example suppose you are having a pen one kind of pen would have been enough to write right correct mm, but, but you have different kinds of ball pens point. ball point pen gel fountain pen. pen pens for calligraphy pen gel pen a pen which has got different Autograph colors pen. of refills pen. different colors of refills yes. are there so why different because each type of pen offers you different kinds of features depending on your on the type of work you want to do like you choose for correcting right so this kind of uh, variations allow you to choose the proper kind of pen for a certain type of activity just like right? different kind of glasses also right so so that's why so, so we will not continue this discussion for longer because we are running out of the time so what will happen is uh, you are having a different set of programming languages each programming language is having some difference from the other okay and in course of time you will understand that how different one programming language is from the other and why it is so why one programming language is called 
uh, is considered superior to the other programming language or how do they compare these things will come slowly you have to understand okay at this point you will not be able to understand but i wanted to give you this understanding from the beginning itself so that you grasp this idea that uh, there are different programming languages different high level programming languages are having different kinds of features okay uh, one simple feature I, I can tell you tell you now itself take the simple example of averaging in averaging what you are doing you are summing some numbers and you are dividing that is your averaging right now in some programming language you have to write a sentence called you add these these numbers in the second sentence you have to write now you divide then you get the answer there is there are some other programming languages where you can write a function we call it a function where these two steps can be done in one step you can write a function of your own and you, you can give a name to the function say average is a function then name you can choose a v e r a g average then within bracket you have to give the numbers if you simply use this function you will not have to write separate sentences for adding and dividing it will give the answer so this is one example where and this is very a very uh, good feature wherein you have to do lot of steps to arrive at some arrive at some answer uh, in one language you have to write individual steps in one language if you define this function once you define and then multiple times you can go on using that okay so this is called user defined functions user defined. user defined so you're a user you want this thing to happen and the way you want you have written written a function then you are putting it in the pro uh, programming language and programming language also understands because it supports that kind of feature and then happens so all that i wanted to tell you is there are different kinds of high level comp uh, high level languages which are called computer programming languages and each programming languages has some features which is distinctly different from the others and that's how we are having different kinds of languages called c c++ fortran java pascal features. yes they differ different in their features. different features so uh, now here one and uh, here we are going to tell you one more uh, step often it so happens that when you run a program suppose you have written a program a computer program a computer program which does this job of averaging for you now you want to give this computer algorithm this is an algorithm right this algorithm which works as a tool a tool which helps you to find average to your friend now suppose you have written a language you written this algorithm or programming program in a language okay a particular language and your friend want to use it so does your friend need to have the same computer language installed in his pc no why no suppose you are you are writing in a language which is in your pc and you have written a computer program to find the average and then you are giving the program to your friend the program your friend also wants to use it so you are the you are the developer right you have developed the program right you are a developer your friend is a user does your friend need to have the same program language installed in his pc yes yes now you are telling yes previously you said no let me tell you the answer is depends depends because there are some programming languages which allows you to compile the whole thing there is a they are compiler based compile the whole thing and generate a file which is called an a dot exe file execute dot exe exe stands for executable file okay it's a file executable file you know different files which you use in a computer have got different extensions like microsoft word has got extension as dot doc dot doc right powerpoint file dot ppt or dot pptx these you know you are familiar with ms word and ppt right so every file in computer system has got an extension it comes with a dot so your pdf file is having an extension dot pdf similarly a compiler based program when you write it can generate after compilation it can generate a program a not program it generate a file which is having an extension of dot exe 
is called the executable file. Now what will happen? You give that executable file to your friend. And your friend does not have this computer programming language installed, computer programming uh, software installed in his PC. You have only given him the executable file, right? I will also try to say, um, because, uh, because my friend and that cannot have the same programming language also. He does not have the programming language, okay? You are giving a tool to him, you are helping your friend by giving this tool, which is nothing but a .exe file, which is generated by your computer. After you have written and compiled the program, computer has generated a .exe file. That .exe file you are giving to your friend. Friend, what will he do? Friend will run that, click on that file, and he will get a file. A f it, the file will open, and it may give him an interface to uh, write the numbers which he wants to get an average of. Okay, he doesn't have to have the programming. He doesn't have to know the programming language. He will not have the program installed in his PC. So these executables, executable files are called platform independent. Platform independent means it is PC independent or environment independent. Okay, so it can be used by your friend without having that computer uh, language or computer programming environment installed in his PC. Okay, so that is one way. But often in interpreter based uh, programming language, this feature is not there. You cannot find out one, the computer cannot generate an exe file out of this. Okay. As for example, it can generate some other file, executable file. For to run that file, the friend should have the programming language software installed. It hence is not platform independent. Okay. Now, often it so happens that a computer program, somebody has developed a computer program. A computer program with lots of features, lots of uh, flexibilities for the user lot of things, if a user knows how to use use the language, he can do wonders. Big programming uh, software you're having. Now, it can allow you to generate executable files and which you can give to your friend. Okay, the, your friend did not know programming. Your, your friend did not even have to have that same programming software installed in his PC. He can simply click and start using it without knowing what is happening. So you're a developer, your friend is a user. Somebody may think, okay, that is a good idea, but why don't we simplify that big programming language into a simpler programming language so that lot of features I don't want, I want a beginner to learn first. Then we need I will simplify things. Suppose a very big, uh, with lots of features, a programming language some, how somebody has developed. That, that that the developers do. Even me, me cannot do. There are computer scientists who are developers. They know how to do it. Okay. So, as for example, it is something like this. Uh, somebody has written that epic Mahabharata, which is a big book, the actual Mahabharata. But for the kids, Mahabharata is sold in a very concise form. Mahabharat for kids. So Mahabharat for kids does not include all the stories which are discussed in, in Mahabharat. Actually, original Mahabharat is much rich. It is an epic. There were discussions. But the kids, for the kids, it is abridged. It is simplified. Okay. Similarly, a very rich computer programming language sometimes the the developer simplify. Okay. They don't include all the features. They include only the basic features for a beginner to understand. Now, at this juncture, I will tell you about such a story. There was a, not was, there is a language, computer programming language, called Quick Basic, Q-U-I-C-K. So when you write the name of the programming language, don't write QBasic, it was a Quick Basic. It was Q-U-I-C-K Basic. It, was, it had no short form. It, it didn't have any short form. Basic, you know, beginners, yeah. all purpose, symbolic instruction code. Yeah. There's a full form. So it was called 
Quick Basic Q U I C K B A S I C. Quick Basic was a compute compiler based programming language. It had multiple features. It offered a new user or a beginner a very good environment, which we call a user friendly environment, to learn the language or to play with the language to understand more. Play means the more you spend time with the language, you understand more. You can explore more features. Okay, so the environment was very good. So you could understand where you have made the mistake while writing a line, or you could open multiple windows. Okay, it is an environment at in the, the PC time. at the same time. Like you open multiple tabs in the PC, it could offer you that as well. So now there was a need to simplify that. Quick Basic, and a new version came, what? which is called Q Basic. So you are not. Also means quick. He also means quick, correct. But here, while writing the name of the programming language, you are not writing Q U I C K Basic. You are writing Q B A S I C. So it is a there's a there's a difference between these two. Although Q Basic is having a full form Quick Basic that we all know. But if you are very precise, then you will understand there was something called Quick Basic. The programming language name is to be written as Q U I C K B I A S I C. We should use it Quick Basic. Yeah, people uh, people are having other options also, but we will confine our discussions only only to these two now. Okay. Quick Basic is the mother of Q Basic. Okay. Q Basic is a simplified version of Quick Basic and Q Basic. If you find the literature of computer books, it is an interpreter-based language. Q Basic, but it is derived from. Derived means it came from Quick Basic. Quick Basic was compiler-based. Okay. Q Basic is interpreter-based. Okay. Now I will. So have you understood this basic concept? Then I will. uh tell you about the features which is which are written in the book okay i will go through them one by one so that you can understand and refer so uh it is one of the simplest high level languages for the beginners some of the features of q basic are it is user friendly like gw basic gw basic you know give wiz basic the yeah it is a name give wiz basic the syntax of the sent statements is very simple syntax means the way you have to write okay that is called syntax okay syntax means say if you are writing in style of writing not style of it is a way of i will tell you one example suppose you are writing i am a good boy it is a correct statement right english wise it is a correct statement but if you write i A good boy am. This is a wrong English. Level up, then the computer will understand. Computer, I'm, 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 I'm not going to the computer level. I'm telling in English. I am a good boy. I have changed the position of am. I am a good boy am. Ha! Huh. So it doesn't make sense, right? So this is a syntax error. The way you have to write, it is not not proper. Okay. This is the meaning of syntax. So where to write what? That has to be correct. that is syntax so the syntax it is telling here the syntax of the statements is very simple to understand since i am telling you about syntax there is something which is called semantics semantics which is not written in this book semantics what is semantics you have to study on your own i will tell you what is semantics then you do further study on your own semantics means whether the sentence is the sentence is grammatically correct but whether it is making sense i will tell you one example give side of an example example is This tree is a good boy. It is grammatically correct. Yeah. This tree, you to see But the knowledge is not the subject predicate by sex is correct, right? Yeah. Subject predicate by sex is correct. The tree is a good boy. But is it making sense? No. Yes. Yeah, so the yeah. tree is a good boy. No, the tree no. is not making sense. But the tree can be male also. No, 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 no. Not not in that sense. I am telling. Usually, the if we assume that term boy or girl is used for human beings. I'm assuming that. Then the tree is a good boy. It's no, not making sense. Make sense. So it is a 
grammatically correct syntax is correct but meaning is not correct yeah, yeah. it is called uh, the knowledge which it is conveying it's having some inconsistency in it okay it is having a semantic error semantic so syntax error. and semantics are different oh, in semantic error uh, very, uh, grammatically, no, grammatically it could be correct but even if you could convey something but which does not make any sense yeah, in okay the, in the wrong knowledge. right so when you are learning about computer science you can draw lots of uh, analogies analogies means some similarities from other subjects like english language or the way later on when you will understand when we will go to the depth of the computer learning we will derive examples from biology we will derive examples from other fields also okay so that, that's why we will grow our understanding on, on, the, on the subject so syntax is very simple it provides windows based application uh, platform for writing programs that is also correct windows based means uh, windows operating system can be used uh, here it is written in the features of qbasic as compiler based language it is the actual thing is Quick Basic was a compiler based compiler based language, but it when it is simplified as Q Basic, it is having interpreters. Okay, you learn in this way. Debugging, removing errors can be easily done. De debugging, so you are coming across a new term. Mm, bug, bug and debug. Bug, bug means what? Bug insect. Insect. Bug in English language is meant an insect. But bug in computer language is called is meaning a mistake. Okay, a mistake. Suppose you are. That means debugging means it will correct the mistake. Ah, debugging means it corrects the mistake. One example of bug is. The grammar means. Ah, suppose uh, I will cite an example of a bug. Bug. One example is suppose you are supposed to sum all the numbers, sum ten numbers. You have to make an average uh -huh. sum, summing of say a one plus a two plus a three plus up to a ten. Example. Yeah, tell me. Right. Um, I have a dog, which is correct. But I have a dog. If it a and dog in one word, and the computer will underline it. That means <coughs> it is showing a mistake. So I will, I will give you the same. I will use the same example, uh, not this this example. The averaging example, which I find very easy to explain. One example of a bug is suppose you have to add the numbers first, right? Then you are Dividing that is an average, right? So when you are adding the numbers in one place, instead of putting plus sign, you have put minus sign. There is a mistake, right? You are supposed to put plus sign everywhere to add. By mistake, you have put minus sign, so it it is a mistake. So that is a bug. Then you I will understand. Then you run the program. Then you understand that program is running, but the answer is not proper. For that, you have to have sense. If there is some problem in the answer. Computer will not. Have any problem? Computer, computer will run it. Mistakes. Computer will not uh, find it a problem. It will add and there it will subtract. But even understand the answer is not proper. Why? Because I put a wrong thing. Wrong thing we put. That is why human beings are called higher level creatures. That's why higher level language. Okay. Okay. That is a separate story altogether. So then you will start finding where did I make mistake. Then you will find. But there are some other examples where. Computer itself will tell you have made a mistake. That is the programming language. As for example, oh, as for example, interpreter. Sorry. No, 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 not for not interpreter or compiler. And um, one, see, the, in this particular example where you have made a mistake in putting the sign instead of plus, you put minus. Computer didn't catch the mistake. Okay, you caught the mistake because you know that the average should have been in this way, but it didn't come that way. It came less. So you know that what mistake you have done. There are some kind of bugs which computer itself catches. As for example, suppose you have to write, you have to print the answer, and for printing, there is a command which you have to use. Print. Control plus P. No, no. You, you first, first listen. Control plus P. It is something which you are using from your keyboard to print, print something. It. In a programming language, you are expected to. Allow the computer to do the whole whole job. You are not doing it manually. Control plus P is your manual way of interacting with the computer. Computer language when you are using, you are giving a set of instructions to the computer, and computer automatically is doing. So you are not having any scope to press Control or P. 
in the programming language, there is a provision to print. And if a printer is connected, it will print, give printout also. Let us assume that the command is print, P R I N T, print you have to write. Okay. But by mistake, you have written instead of print, P R I N T, instead of T, you have written D. Suppose print. print. Computer does not know what it means. Computer knows there is something called print. Computer does not know P R I N D. So what it will do? It will show a mistake in this line. It will show you. So computer will not run. It will show you this mistake. Okay. So this is a debugging. Right? So now there is now what do you understand? There are certain words which computer understands. Like print, computer understands. Input. I N P U T input computer understands that. No, no. There are certain terms which computer understands. You have to remember. Enter. Just hold. You have to understand that there are certain words which computer understands. Okay. Like print, computer understands. Or computer understands input. I N P U T. Or computer understands, say scan. S C A N. Some like some words, it is made to understand because the computer programming environment is developed in that way, right? These specific words or functions which computer understands or the programming language understands by default, you don't have to teach it. It comes as a package. They are called library functions. They are called library functions. In this example, where I have told that somebody has made a mistake in writing the word print. Instead of writing P R I N T, the P person wrote. P I I T. No, yeah, P R I T. So N is missing. So there is nothing called print in the print, print. print in, the, in the library. So computer will show a mistake. But if you write P R I N T, then computer understands, yes, I am aware of this oh, word. Just like a library, like a uh, library will have suppose uh, many books. No, no, not many. A uh, children books. Mm. Uh, then uh, if we search the books for adults, mm. like or uh, horror stories, mm. uh, then then we cannot get it in a library because it's not available. Only. But it is something similar. So something similar. Basically, the term library is used because in library we have books. If you search. A particular book which is not kept in the, in the library. A library has got say 10,000 books. Okay. And suppose you are searching for a book which is not kept in the library. Then the librarian will say I don't have the book. Or I don't understand. Similarly in the programming language there are certain functions. Print is a function. Say input is a function. Output is a function. Scan is a function. There are certain functions which are from the beginning it is a part of the programming language. They are called library functions. And other than the library function, if you write your own function, that becomes a user-defined function. User-defined. User-defined function means which is not a library function. Huh. user -defined. So there are two types of functions used in a programming language or algorithm. One is library function, which is coming as a part, which are coming as a part of the computer language itself, which comes to the software. If you install QBasic in your computer, it will come by default. So there's a library functions. But if you want to make a function of your own, create a function of your own, then you have to write a set of code, programming language code, to make that function. And over and over you can make use of the function. These are called user-defined functions. Okay. So here, QBasic, let's come back to the QBasic. QBasic is a programming language which is interpreter based but it is derived from quick basic q u i c k basic which was compiler based okay and it is a very simple language it is a high level language for the beginners and it is an improved version of gw basic in gw basic you had you have not learned yet uh, each programming statement or sentence we don't use the term sentence we call line. statement or lines they had a line number line number before every line you put some some line numbers this is not there nowadays whatever 
each program is like that way you have given bullets na instead of bullets they have missed that 1 2 3 4 or 10 20 30 40 what some number so these numbers is to tell the computers that which which um, statement has to be executed first or next so there are certain things which you will learn in the in course of time but quick basic that does not need quick basic or q basic it does not need this kind of line numbers but in some cases it can run some programs which are written in gw basic so to some extent you can run gw basic program in, in this environment but not all some features do, don't match so it is so let me come back to the book what all written about q basic so it is written it does not require line numbers the thing which i just explained to you it provides the facility to find errors in a program debugging basically it works with numeric as well as non numeric numeric means numbers so mathematical calculations they are all numerics non numeric means text okay it is useful for mathematical scientific and engineering purposes as well and let me tell you qbasic also offers you some uh, feature to generate sound musical notes okay suppose you want to uh, give sa re ga ma it can using the computer speaker as output it can give you that so you can compose your your music also uh, by if you learn this language okay do i have a software in my computer no you don't have it so we have to if your school wants you to write a few programs in this language okay. then yeah, then you have to do it but later on later on hold so each programming language requires some basic elements which are essentially needed to write a program QBasic consists of such elements which are mentioned below. Character sets. What is character set? Very simple. A B C D E F G H. These are character sets. Operators and expressions. Operator means what? Class is an operator, right? Minus, minus, minus multiplication, multiplication mm -hmm. division, and there are other operators also like you no know, exponent. Exponent means to the power. Yes. Say so three to the power two is what? Nine. Three into two. Three into three, right? Three to the power two. This is called an exponent. That is also an operation. Bracket is also called an an operation. Okay, these are the operators. Then constants and variables. That you know, constant. Two is a constant. Ten is a constant. Or when you are writing p, it is an algebraic symbol. So you can treat it as a variable. So if you write ten into p, so ten is a constant coefficient. P is a variable. So if we ask you. my expression is 10 into p what is the value of this expression when p is 5 so answer is 10 into p means 10 into 5 answer is 50 is like this so you are having expressions expression means you are having an algebraic expression then constant variables i have told commands and statements commands and statements means the statement itself to write the computer program maybe in when you learn writing the program you will appreciate it better so basically the such elements of any programming language are character sets operators and expressions character sets are all a b c d e f g h all these are character sets and there are some special characters yes. comma question mark hash dollar sign there are all special characters okay then you have numbers they are all Peace all characters rupees they are all characters numbers are uh, alphabetics are also also characters Then you are having <coughs> numeric numbers. <coughs> They include all the numbers from zero to nine. The numeric digits and their combinations. They are all. They are all. The combinations. Combinations of other numbers. Nine. Correct. Correct. So special characters I told you: question Nine mark, comma, basic, like right. question mark, comma, semicolon, colon, dollar sign, double quotes, single quotes, hash, asterisk, slash, percent, exclamation. All these are special characters. This is what we have learned in the. Uh, younger days so uh, commas and statements the statement of the language itself they, they are all combining commands and different statements so i have already explained to you what are the character sets and what are the operators and expressions but what you to remember is in each programming language there is a way to write the operators so as for example in q basic addition is written as plus That is correct for all the languages. If you have to write in C language, you have to use plus. Subtraction is minus. Multiplication is use star. Why? What is the problem? There is no no no. 
if you put cross computer without understand why it is written in this way the compiler is prepared or the interpreter is prepared in this way if you the star is defined as one. multiplication so you have, you have to multiply between a and b you have to use a star b a into b that will mean a into b division is slash a slash b exponent exponent means slash no in in my phone we can use division as in line and dot dot on the but in this programming language you have to put slash that is the meaning if you put something else it will show you a syntax error okay so it is a slash which is a division then exponent exponent this symbol which is looking like an upward direction arrow it is called a caret 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 what is caret caret no this caret symbol is for exponent so a caret b means a to the power b this same caret is written in some other language say fortran as star star a star star b but in this language it is exponent sign there is caret sign so this you have to learn brackets brackets you know how to use so there are some relational operators like less than greater than which you know from mathematics classes less than equal to greater than equal to equal to and there is something called not equal to see not equal to sign is see uh, how is it written it is written as triangular bracket so one less than sign and followed by one greater than sign that means not equal that means that it can be greater or it can be equal <coughs> no it is not for for that meaning it is the person who has created the language his choice his choice as for example in matlab language matlab ha matlab language this not equal to sign is given in a completely different way exclamation exclamation sign and then then equal to that's kind of so it is the way the language is written language is created so when you are uh, learning a programming language you have to be familiar with the symbols which the programming language uses okay you should not mix so if you really want to mean a is not equal to b you have to use this symbol triangular bracket when you are writing in q basic in some other language you have to use that programming language is way to write it then there are some logical operators logical operators are needed to compare two or more relational operators say as for example i will give you a logical operation say there are certain uh, expressions called and okay or not okay so if i just tell you that um, i will give you i will give you one one example say ha uh, let m let m represents the number of students in the class okay and n represents the, the marks marks scored in english by the students okay m by n no no not it just listen what i am telling you agree that m is always a positive number number of students the number of student cannot be cannot be negative positive. always positive number so should be greater than 0 yes, should be not plus greater than 0 yes sir marks marks also cannot be negative zero now if i write m is greater than zero huh? it is correct because m is the number of students so it is greater than zero yeah, yeah, yeah. then n is the marks is also greater than zero now if i want to write a statement m is greater than zero and n is greater than zero so m is greater than 0 is an expression m and n are greater than 0 both are greater than 0 so if you write in english both m and n are greater than 0 full stop makes sense you are writing a programming language what you will write uh -huh. m is greater than 0 it is a hold hold it is a relational statement m is greater than 0 n is greater than 0 is also a relational statement and both are correct you will write m greater than 0 and a and b okay you have to write in capital here n is greater than 0 so this becomes a logical operation and okay similarly there are other examples also or or not this in the course of time i can cite you some some more examples Why you have to do so in this particular example see, they have given an an, an example uh, what example they have given so i will show you a is equal to 10 so they have taken three numbers okay a is equal to 10 b is equal to 8 c is equal to 5 they have taken three numbers then they are using 
the operator and. So what it is writing? A is equal to B. They are writing. That's false. Correct, na? A is equal to B is false. B is equal to C is correct. No, that is also false. That's B false. is A, C is false. That's not correct. So entire things becomes false. So in, in order to make it true, each and every element has to has to, has to be true. No, no, each and everything has to be true. Then only the whole thing can be true. Okay, but now suppose. A is equal to B is true, no, it's false, right? A is not equal to eight. B is equal to C, is it true? Let us see. B is eight, C is five. No, that is also false. So this is a false. This is a false. So or, or means I am happy if either of them is true, but both are wrong. So it is not, false. Not, not. It is false. Not means. So let us see. But is not. It is writing A is equal to B. A is what ten? B is equal to eight. Is it correct? No. No. Well, so is no. So no and not. These two two negatives cancel. So it is true. Oh, <laughs> negative, negative. Cancel. Plus, uh, ah. Minus minus plus three is there. Yeah. So plus that plus that that, yeah. that comes. The concept oh, is translated here also. So we will see more details about now, this. Now this now, is math. This is math. You are understanding this. So now what I what I want to do is now here there are some examples given. Say mathematical expression forty into five, but if you write in this way forty star five, the question you just asked yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then five a plus six b. This is algebraic equation. Five into five star a plus plus six plus maybe six star star, 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 star b. Star b. Very good. Then a into b into c. How will you write? A star b star c. Very good. So like this, what you have to do is you have to study this thing. It's very interesting, and then if you Go through this. So, I, what I, what task I would like to give you is like this. After having this class done, you try to understand these two things. Okay, very simple. Say four into a into b into c, four star a star b star c. So each of these you can write on your own. It will refer to this. Okay, very interesting. Once you learn it, na you can write such computer programs. Which will save a lot of your time. You will say, "I don't care. I will just fit. I will write a program and I will solve. Big, big calculations. You can finish. You can do lot of other things also. Once you know how to use the potential of a computer programming language, then write down the following statement in Q Basic. Fifteen is added to three times p. The fifteen plus three times p is what? Three into p. So three star p is it? Three star p plus fifteen. Oh, Very simple. Say the sum of m and n is greater than twenty-five. Sum of m and n, m plus n, you give a bracket. Same less greater than zero. Ah, so very similar. So yeah. you start. You first go through this once again. Since I have explained everything to you, and then you try to do the exercises on your own. Okay. So this ends today's class. So I will just in two minutes. Don't interrupt me now. I will close the class in two minutes. and i will summarize what all i have taught today i have taught you about the basic concept of a programming language and in this process i have told you about the concept of high level language and the machine language in the machine language the computer thinks in zeros and ones but the high level language is used by human beings to write the way they understand and there is a process of conversion to the high level language to the machine language either with the help of interpreter or a compiler in the process of interpreting the computer analyzes line after line once at a time on the other hand in the case of a compiler the computer compiles the all the statements to make sense out of it okay and we have discussed here a programming language called q basic which is derived from q basic which is the mother of q basic quick basic was a compiler based program with lots of features q basic has been derived from it and it is based on interpreters and we have also discussed <coughs> the different elements of the computing language which is character sets operator expression constant variables commas and statements and we have shown some examples how they are written and in the discussion we have also mentioned the concepts about concepts of library functions and user defined functions and that's it now it is left to you so all these exercises you need to do on your own and you will find all the answers in this textbook itself so that you don't have to consult me once again so thank you very much say tata say tata 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 bye bye now you can switch off the video